If you could design your own drum practice pad, what would it feel like? Warming up on e-pads provides a natural transition from practice pad to drum set. The benefits of e-pad include quiet playing surface and shock resistant properties that help reduce the risk of stress related injuries. E-pad offers the perfect feel and energy return for developing speed, endurance and control. You will meet the challenge of the weaker hand with e-pad. At e-pad we know the need for speed, control and endurance. Get your chops together with e-pads and Duraflex playing surface. Practicing with e-pads builds your finger, wrist and forearm strength and helps you gain better control and endurance. Into feel? Well, e-pads replicate the response and feel of a real drum. Our Pro Deluxe knee pad is portable, convenient, and lightweight. Perfect for the beginner, intermediate, or pro touring drummers. At e-pad, our Enduraflex practice surface was perfected to eliminate extreme bounce and unrealistic rebound. Get your licks in with our Strike Zone and Pro Deluxe knee pads. E-pad. Your source for high quality drum set practice pads and accessories. You're listening to Robin Flan's Drummer Interviews, the number one drum radio show in all of Los Angeles. The world. The galaxy. <laughs> I'm Robin Flans, and this is Robin Flans Drummer Interviews. And this interview is sponsored by EPAD Practice Pads, the only practice pad with Enduraflex playing surface. And you can check them out at www.epadco.com. That's E P A D C O.com. And I'm here with my co-host and producer, Ed Eblen. Welcome, everybody. And this is a new thing for us today. Yes. A new segment. It's called Indie, I-N-D-I, Independent, Notable, Drumming, Individual. And that's, It's about time. <laughs> and that's what <laughs> we have today. A great drummer with a notable project that he actually self-produced. It's um, a fantastic record, and uh, it's called Fantasy. It's by his band called 3D Rhythm of Life. The three Ds stand for diverse, dynamic, and danceable, and boy, is it. It's um, their latest album called Fantasy. I think I said that. You uh, did. Uh <laughs> Uh, the title track is the fantastic uh, track by Earth, Wind, and Fire. And uh, just as a sidebar, it was recorded prior to Maurice White's passing. It's a wonderful rendition. And um, Michael, thank you for being with us today. And, and it's just a fantastic record. It's your sixth project with this band that you actually formed. And... And I'm wondering how the band came to be. Well, hey, Robin. Hey, Ed. Thank you so much for having me on your show. What a <laughs> pleasure. And Our pleasure. Yeah, and to connect with some old friends. Ed and I go back a while, and God, I love his pads. Yes, and that is an endorsement. Every drummer, pick one up. Your hands will get better fast. Thank right. you. My, and by the way, we're talking to the Latin Steve Gadd, Mike Tate. Go ahead. <laughs> well, that, wow. Uh, thank you. That's a big title. Um, I do my best. <laughs> Great playing on this record. Great playing. Oh, thanks so much. Um, it was a pleasure making this record. This, as you said, this is our sixth full recording, um, f full record album. Um, we have a bunch of singles and dance mixes in between. Um, I have had the group now 16 years. and um, Wow. It's been a long time, um, and we've done a lot of different things and uh, with a lot of hope and aspirations, um, I hope to realize very soon. Um, Fantasy was born out of uh, just the love of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm. and um, One of my favorite bands. Absolutely, right? Yeah. And um, we started this, what I call the original arrangement, about three years ago, a lot of the music um, from the group 3D Rhythm of Life has started 
is a trio instrumental um you know kind of like what they used to do in the old days you know a band would go out on the road um work the material up and when it was ready then take it into the studio and you know um expand the arrangement and that's what we did i mean it, it seems like just yesterday that we went down the road with this song um we became the first unofficial tribute to mr maurice white really? um, yeah boy and you had no way of knowing <sighs> No, no way of knowing. It was really interesting because um, we released the video first um, a little over a year ago, and then the single, and then the CD album was just released June 29th here in New York. Mm. Um, and Mr. Maurice White had passed away two or three days before or after. I have to go back. I think it's after mm. um, we released the video, mm. and. Um, I did have the honor of meeting Verdine and Ralph and the fellows when they were here in New York and also in Massachusetts. Um, I didn't meet Maurice. I, you know, would have well, loved yeah, to. Yeah, he um, wasn't. He wasn't with them for a long time because of his illness. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was an amazing experience because um, Maurice. You know, when I went back and I studied Earth, Wind, and Fire. You know, as a musician, as a drummer. You know, what's not to say that these guys are just unbelievable, the music that they produced, you know, the body of work, and how Maurice was such, you know, had such a vision right, um, right. for this group. And, you know, listened to some great interviews after Maurice passed with his brother Verdine talking about his vision, how he executed it. And um, there's one similarity between Maurice and myself is that we're both drummers with a vision. It right. kind of ends there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, wor I'm working on uh, my body of work with the band, but he really, he really knew what he wanted to do, and he did it. Um, and he was very meticulous with the details. I learned a lot just listening to the interviews with Verdine and mm. reading things uh, about the different records and stuff and how he produced them and how he trained the guys in the band, you know, both musically, um, with um, with dance, with uh, acting, everything, everything. And yeah. Um, yeah. just an amazing man. So yeah. um, I had asked, you know, I, you know, I had asked a couple of folks, I said, do you think Maurice would have proved? And they said, yeah, <laughs> he would have proved. You guys did a great job. Absolutely. And it, it, Absolutely. So, so tell me how, what, how did you, why, why Latin? I mean, what, what was it about that music? Where, where did that begin for you? And how did you hone that, that piece of music uh, in, in your drumming life? Well, the Latin influence, I always like to say I came in kind of through the back door. <laughs> um, and I'm going to, I'll explain that um, stylistically. I mean, I grew up in Queens, New York and being a drummer, um, Everyone was, you know, was my neighbor. So I was into all different types of music, all mm. different types of style. And um, a really good friend of mine who's an amazing drummer and singer, he was with um, Spyro Gyro for a while, a gentleman, by, and he's on the new record singing um, Bonnie Bonaparte, Bonnie B. We were playing down Atlantic City, and we met, and long story short, he originally is from Trinidad, and he played a lot of Calypso and Soca music, and I always was kind of gravitating toward Latin tropical music. Hmm. And through Calypso and Soca music, I kind of came in, as I say, the back door into heavier Latin music or what my capabilities would be able to, you know, uh, what I'd be able to execute. You see what I'm saying? Right. And um, I just, you know, if it was if it was good music and good drumming, um, and I play drum set predominantly, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't sell myself as a percussionist. I really leave that to the real guys. <laughs> um, but I'm interested in all that type of music. So it was really a very natural evolution because within calypso music, soca music, reggae music, you have a lot of similarities that you find in Afro-Cuban music. Right. And and um, bringing it to the drum set. And I'm also a songwriter. So, you know, coming from that perspective, bringing music into the arrangement as opposed to like some of these really phenomenal guys out there that sound like 12 drummers and they're just one person you know my abilities were maybe not on that level but i approached the music as like making the drum part part of the arrangement you know right so, right it was a lot of different influences as you can hear on the record you know there there are those 
Latin tropical um, grooves and flavors. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, that's how I kind of got into it. I mean, I, I was really fortunate to study with a few guys um, who like. kind of turned me into uh, turned me on to um, some of the rhythms. A gentleman by the name of Frankie Malave, who was here in New York City. Um, you probably remember him from the modern drummer days. Uh -huh. um, just an outstanding percussionist. He used to teach a drummer's collective. Right. And this, this drummer, Bonnie Bonaparte, uh, for those of you who are not hip to him, um, phenomenal drummer and singer. I think he was with Spire Jive for about seven or eight years. Mm. And, um, you know, he showed me some really interesting things. Um, and I just, you know, it's just a matter of absorbing all those styles to what we've made. So there's definitely, you know... There's definitely an island groove in what you know in what oh, we do. Oh, yeah, you know? absolutely. And and um, and so what what um, how I mean how did you actually start this band? Well, this band came about um, with the guitar player Chris Amalar. We had done you know a bunch of like, kind of freelance party gigs and stuff like that. Mm. And um, back here in New York, if you're playing, you know, like, say, a wedding or something, they always have, like, continuous music. And um, one day, he and I were on the bandstand. I said, hey, man, let's just play some music. And we played. And I said, you know, I have an idea. Let's put a band together. Let's do a trio. He goes, oh, you like a jazz trio? I said, no, not like a jazz trio. I know this piano player plays great left-hand bass. Let's kind of make it like an, an instrumental song band. And that's actually how it was born. Huh. Um He's still in a group. There's a, you know, the family has grown. Um, there's a lot of really very talented people that are on the recording and do the live shows as well. Huh. Um, that's how it was born, literally on a um, bandstand in New Jersey somewhere, just <laughs> you know, just playing continuous, just playing some tunes, just guitar and drums. Right. Um, and and it and it grew and evolved into something different. I mean, obviously. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, it, when we did the first video we put out called Rhythm of the City, and um, it's basically the guy interviewing me, he asked me a question. You don't see him, but my response is, you know, it's an instrumental song band, and it's music that we all like to play in many, many different styles. Um, you know, when we got up into the Latin music, the other two guys, they really hadn't played Latin music at all. So we came at it, you know, through some Cuban music, Gloria Stefan's Mi Tierra record, um, and it evolved because the band, uh, I think, Ed, you have probably some of the earlier CDs. There's a gospel R&B New Orleans flavor in the band. Yes. Um, there's a lot of things running through that make our style. Right. Um, so I, now I call it very easy when people say, what do you do? I say, it's Latin tropical soul. And they're like, oh, yeah, I like that. I get, LTS, I get it, I get it. And it, it is. It's it's Latin music, right. which is the traditional music, tropical, which is kind of like the Caribbean, and the soul and the R&B dance music put together in such a way, like how we did fantasy, right. you know? Right. Well, I, well, I think that uh, diverse, dynamic, and danceable sort of sums it up and... Um yeah, I think uh, I just want to, you know, sort of hold this up, and I'm holding up yeah, your album, good. and uh, I I want to just say thank you so much for for coming on today and and being with us and giving us just a, a little idea of what it is you do and fantastic, oh, my, fantastic my, 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 album. My pleasure. I've been a fan of your writing and your work for a long time, and. It's 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 crazy how like the two worlds come together through friends and things like that. Um, can I share the you know like the YouTube link? Oh, and, of course, and all of it, all Please of it. Do. Yes, yes. Well, we made our very first music video, a narrative piece um, for fantasy, which I'm very very proud of. Um, if you go to YouTube and you punch in 3D rhythm of life fantasy, you'll see um, our video, our representation of the song, um, Three Little Vignettes, and um, there's a young lady, there's a dance couple, and then the band. And it kind of tells you, you know, about the song and how it all came together. It's fun. I hope it puts a smile on your face. And everybody listening, I don't have the actress's phone number. Uh, <laughs> she's... She's, she has become the star of the video. She's a sweetheart. She's very humble. And she said, really? I said, yeah. I said, every man, woman, boy, child, girl, 
every age, everyone wants to know who you are. <laughs> I, I just, I just want to say that it's the the number three, and then it's D as in dog. Okay, I want to make sure it's not spelled out three. Right, it's the number yeah. three, D as in dog or David, and our website is here, H-E-A-R, 3dmusic.com. You can find us on Facebook under Michael Tate, 3D Rhythm of Life. And um, we're on Instagram under Slam Bass, which is S-L-A-M-B-A-S-S. And um, correspond with us. I'm the guy that receives it and answers all correspondence. Cool. And we should give Mike a big hand for being our first on this new indie segment. I-N-D-I, yes. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much for for coming on, and and, um, we will see you again. I hope so, and I hope to uh, see you guys. Ed, it's been a bunch of years since I've seen you, and I hear great things are going for your son. And Oh, um, yeah. He's tearing it up that's out That's fantastic. There. Yeah. But thank you for that. Yeah, and maybe there's, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll nam it or something. This, But you'll, we'll be in touch and, and certainly maybe get to uh, have a nosh, as it is said. <laughs> and I'm big that on the nosh thing. <laughs> yeah, that, Robin, thank you so much. Oh, I really appreciate my it. My pleasure, Michael. Thanks. Y'all have a good day, okay? You too.